Module 32, The Early Chink Painting I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department, Drawing and Painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur, I am going to speak on the uh, I am going to speak on Chinese art, the early Qing painting. With the end of the Ming and the beginning of the Qing dynasty, Chinese painting entered a third phase. The Qing regime brought China peace and prosperity in which the middle classes expanded and flourished. For educated men and women, painting and calligraphy became popular pastimes. The leaders of the orthodox school in this generation were the four Wangs, Wang Shi Min, Wang Qian, Wang Yuan Qi and Wang Hui. The four Wangs along with two painters Wu Li and Yun Xiaoping make up the six great masters of the Qing dynasty. The orthodox masters in the scholarly tradition. With the end of the Ming period and beginning of the Qing dynasty, Chinese painting entered a third phase. The Qing regime brought China peace and prosperity in which the middle classes expanded and flourished. For educated men and women, painting and calligraphy became popular pastimes. There was no longer a serious rivalry between the academic and the scholarly traditions in Chinese painting. The academic style had become completely fossilized and no new developments could be expected from that quarter. Instead, divisions began to appear within the literary tradition itself. At one extreme, orthodox follower of the art philosophy and brush styles laid down by the Ming critique Tung Chi Chang and at the other the individualists and expressionists. Between these two poles lie the great majority of the Qing amateur painters. In general, Chinese critiques have divided Qing painters into groups such as the six great masters of the Qing dynasty, the eight masters of Nanking and the eight Yang Chao eccentrics. Except in the case of the six great masters, these men were very loosely associated, sometimes merely by the accident of living in the same town or district and were not in the least conscious of belonging to any group. Nevertheless, these labels are convenient in helping one to pick our way through the scores of painters at work during the Qing dynasty. The stability imposed by the Manchus and the willingness of conservative scholars to suppose them provided ideal conditions for the doctrines of Tung Chi Chang to take root. The six great masters of the orthodox literary painting of the early Qing dynasty were the so-called four Wangs, Wu Li and Yun Xiaoping. The leaders of the orthodox school in this generation were the two older of the so-called four Wangs, Wang Shi Min, Wang Qian, Wang Yuan Qi and Wang Hui. Wang Shi Min, he was active from 1592 to 1680, was the chief agent in the consolidation of Tung Chi Chang's theories. He came from a prominent family 
of scholars in Kyangsu and studied painting under Tung Chi Chang while still young. He held an official position in the Ming government and at the fall of the Ming dynasty, he retired to Tai Tsung in Kyangsu where he indulged his passion for painting, entertaining artists and scholars teaching pupils, collecting and connoisseurship. He brought or borrowed pictures by his favorite artists whenever he could in order to study and copy them and so enrich his own stock of techniques and motives. His models were Yuan masters Huang Kung Wang and Ni Tisan. He followed Huang Kung Wang method of building the picture slowly, stroke on stroke and wash on wash. He had no desire to create a new, yet he was an able painter. His great series of landscapes in the manner of Huang were painted when he was in his 70s are among the noblest achievements of the Qing literati. Landscape in the manner of Chao Meng Fu, dated to 1670. This is an album leaf, ink and color on paper, and at present in Wang Collection, New York. This painting is from an album of pictures done in imitation of various masters. Here, Chao Meng Fu elements are not easily detectable. The archaistic clouds, heavy green color and cramped, tortuous composition evidently refer to Chao's reworking of Tang or Five Dynasties landscape type. In the painting, there is no sense of space or atmosphere, no real body to the forms, no feeling of grandeur in nature, nothing that can be called skillful drawing. Wang Shi Min's close friend Wang Qian, who was active from 1599 to 1660, was the second of the four Wangs. Wang Hui and Wang Yuan Qi and in two other artists Wu Li and Yun Xiaoping who are commonly grouped with the Wangs as the six great orthodox masters of the early Qing. He too studied Huang Kung Wang but he interpreted the relaxed brushwork of the Yuan master in a very personal way. It is said that works of Wang Shi Min's contemporary Wang Qian are often so similar to his own that it requires sharp eye to distinguish them. Wang Yuan Qi was active from 1642 to 1715. The youngest of the group and fourth of the four Wangs, he was the grandson of Wang Shi Min and studied painting under him. He rose to high rank as an official in the Qing administration under the Emperor Kang Hisi, who reigned from 1662 to 1722, for whom he was the chief compiler of huge encyclopedia of painting and calligraphy published in 1708. The emperor often summoned him to paint and would sit watching him for hours. Though Wang Yuan Chi was himself an admirer of Ni Tisan, but his works make it clear that he was 
no more a copist. He adopted Ni Tisan's horizontally divided composition. His dry brushwork and his air of detachment, but their all similarity ends. For the Ni Tisan's painting is subtly elusive and deeply poetic, while Wang Yuan Chi was obsessed with the organization of form in space. A contemporary described how he laboriously built up his compositions, pulling apart and reassembling his rocks and mountains into closely interlocked masses until he attained the complete realization of his concepts. In their careful construction and their concern with abstract form, his landscapes have been likened to those of Paul Cezanne. In one of his two inscriptions on the landscape in the neat Tisan manner, reproduced here, river landscape in the manner of neat Tisan, dated to 1704. It is a hanging scroll, ink and light colors on paper, and at present in J.P. Dubois' collection, Lugano. He writes that he painted it after his memory of a picture by his grandfather Wang Shi Min, which had been done in imitation of Tung Chi Chang. And behind all this, of course, was Ni Tisan, the ultimate source, ultimate that is, until we go further and trace the sources of Ni Tisan style. Wang Yuan Chi was the most original of the four Wangs who painted in a conservative style, as also the orthodox painters of the 18th century painted abstracted landscapes in the manner of Yuan dynasty, who in turn modeled their paintings on those of still earlier Tang dynasty. Wang Yuan Chi's painting landscape belongs to Qing dynasty. It is ink and light colors on paper and at present in Musée Gumet, Paris. It is a good example. Wang Yuan Chi of all traditionalists, he was the most inventive. His landscapes communicate space and depth by subtly breaking up the surface of the picture. A mountain slope becoming a collection of blocks executed in an almost cubist manner. One of his, one of his examples can be discussed. Landscape in the style of Huang Gong Wang, dated to 1687. It is ink and color on paper, a hanging scroll in the collection of British Museum London. Here Wang uses predominantly horizontal texture strokes, like his model Huang Kong Wang, apart from the wash for distant mountain peaks. The cloudy mist creates a sense of distance. The prose inscription of the artist describes how orthodox artists of the Qing era acquired the models of the past. At the same time, it creates a balance between pictorial composition and empty space placed at the end of a zigzag compositional line placed at the end of zigzag compositional line which begins at the bottom right with the emptiness of the cut in surface of the water continuing on the left with larger area of water 
and finally being taken up on the right by the whips of cloud from the mountains coming to a hall towards the left. This composition line ends with the inscription. Nevertheless, his role as a forger, copyist is more accurate, became clear only in recent years when his brushwork technique was examined very closely. It now seems that works hitherto attributed to painters of the Shung, Yuan or Ming era were painted in his studio. He was apparently able to deliver whole collections of historical Shung and Yuan paintings to order. Jean Perry Dubose, who was one of the first Occidental scholars to arrive at a real understanding of the very specialized value of this school of painting, has likened Wan Yuan Chi to Cezanne. His link to Cezanne was his use of simple, warm and cool tones like Cezanne. Wang protested that his art was founded in nature and recommended constant observation of real scenery to his pupils. But also like Cezanne, he was absorbed with problems not so much representational as abstract with in his own words that which is produced by an interaction of the empty and the solid. Yun Xiaoping, he was active from 1633 to 1690. The four Wangs along with two painters Wu Li and Yun Xiaoping make up the six great masters of the Qing dynasty. A friend of Wang Hui and a painter of free and poetic landscapes. One such good example is a hanging scroll of a landscape in the collection of Taichung, Taiwan National Palace Museum. Landscape and Flowers is another album leaf of Yun Xiaoping with ink and color on paper in the collection of National Palace Museum, Taibi. Being a master of the flower painting genre, his peonies were painted in the boneless style first used during the Northern Shung period in which color washes are used without ink outlines. He said his aim was to revive the boneless manner of the painter Huang Chuan and in this he was successful. He often worked in color in order to please his patrons but himself preferred the light and refined manner of the Shung masters. In his Japanese quince dated to 1685, ink and watercolor on paper, fan leaf and at present in SMBPK Berlin Museum. Yun's pictorial representation in the boneless style shows a blossoming branch of the thorny Japanese flowering quince in a very realistic and lively manner. But at the same time with a light and sketch like effect. The composition of the picture and the inscription have a complementary effect, especially through the fine calligraphic use of the brush. For the branches with thorns and the delicate script in the Qing Shu style. 
Yun Shuping's style of flowers became a model for the orthodox court painters. Yun developed Tao's style of flower painting. Painting is the strictly naturalistic sense with outlines. Qi Shang and painting in a free sketch-like manner, Qi Yi without outlines, form being indicated simply by area of color Mogu. Yun favored the later style because it made him capture the fleeting impressions of nature more effectively. His innovations in flower and bird painting were in technique, in the use of washes, textured strokes and color harmonies. When he died, he was very poor and his friend Wang Hui assumed both the costs of the coffin and the performance of the funeral ceremonies. Wang Hui, he was active from 1632 to 1718. It is not always easy to separate the landscapes of Wang Qian from those of his pupil Wang Hui. The third of the four Wangs, Wang Hui was a pupil of Wang Qian and both being of the same age studied under Wang Shi Min. It was Wang Qin who had introduced his pupil Wang Hui to Wang Shi Min who remarked sadly, I only regret that he was not old enough to meet Tung Chi Chang. There is no doubt that Wang Hui was a faithful disciple. He spent long peaceful life turning out landscapes in the manner of Huang Kung Wang and other early masters. He was perhaps the most famous painter of his day in China, a prolific master whose denying works exist in considerable quantity. His style based primarily on gifted brushwork is more varied than two older Wangs. His long scroll, some like the one in Wang collection over 50 feet in length, show the most remarkable consistency of brushwork at the service of the most complex temporal and spatial organization to be found in Chinese painting. 10,000 miles of Yang Chi section of a hand scroll, ink and slight color on paper belonging to Qing dynasty and at present in H.C. Wang collection, New Hampshire. In 1692, Wang Hui was commissioned by the Kangxi emperor who ruled from 1661 to 1722 to paint the imperial southern tour, a 71-day royal progress through present-day Jiangsu and Qiqiang provinces. The 12 hand scrolls, each over 20 feet long, are the most complex and extensive pictorial record of their time. No painter of the Shung dynasty or later produced works of greater competence. According to the artist inscription, the small landscape of 1680 was done in a colored manner of the Shung painter Kan Feng Tusu. The landscape illustrated calm, scholarly, dispassionate with its vague allusion to the southern Shung style is a typical example of the intellectual dryness of the more conservative literary painters of the Qing dynasty. The Lu Mountains by Wang Hui dated to 1692. It is 
ink on paper, hand scrawl and in the collection of S. M. B. P. K. Berlin. His abilities, especially his style in old age are seen very clearly on hanging scrolls with typical literary motifs, works which refer to the old masters. In these, he exhibited his range of brush strokes, horizontal, vertical and diagonal. The diagonal strokes he used to suggest the texture of stones, mountains and vegetation a technique that creates the impression of countless plants and rocks. He depicted expanses of water with the same strokes, small and carved. His own style developed through study of the works of the Yuan painters and culminated in his discovery of the monumental landscapes of early Shung painting. Landscape in the style of Tang Yin by Wang Hui is dated to 1690. It is ink color on silk, a hanging scroll and at present in the Napstrick Museum, Prague. Like Tang Yin of the Ming era who combined the blue-green style with classical ink technique, Wang Hui worked with light blue green with ink drawn texture. His work is in effect a synthesis of Shung and Yuan painting combined with the literary painting of the Ming era. Wang Shi Min saw in Wang Hui an enlightened one, a Chan painter, a congenial spirit whose artistic vision brought to life the great painters of the past and even through his influences and techniques were many he mastered Fan Quan's raindrop texture as well as Ju Ran's hemp fiber texture perfectly in his finest work. He did not simply copy older works but created new compositions that harmoniously combined styles that had been considered incompatible. Traditionally associate with the group of the four Wangs, also known as Laodong school, are some painters whose works is neither wholly orthodox nor completely individualist. Of these own was Wu Li, who was active from 1632 to 1718. The only prominent Chinese painter ever to become a Christian, he died a Jesuit priest. He was a pupil of Wang Shi Min and Wang Qian and a close friend of Wang Hui. Boating on the river below a Buddhist temple is an album leaf ink and light colors on paper and at present in the palace museum collection Taichung is one of his good creations. Like all other orthodox masters of his time, he worked often in old styles. The manner most original to Wu Li himself is that represented in a plate, a leaf from one of his albums ostensibly done in homage to Shung and Yuan masters. It is a dry and intellectual kind of painting which in the Chinese phrase used ink as sparingly as if it were gold. Certain forms in it are artists personal. Peaks and ridges twist in distinctive ways and large masses are made up of smaller bulging shapes, often oddly pointed at the top or side. Such precedent for this mode of construction can be found in the works of Tung Chi Chang. 
the insistent repetition of rows of teen along the contours of rocks and edges of tree trunks giving a fury texture to these bodies is a feature derived from Wang Shi Min. At the age of 50, he got himself converted to Christianity and also visited Western countries. But the fact is that no trace of Western influence appears in it.